You're welcome once again to the platform Nigeria. You're live at Covenant Christian Center, Igomu, Lagos. Our next speaker is Mosumola Umoru. She is the founder and CEO of Farm Shop. Mosumola's daily role is to oversee the development and operations of a 7,000-acre agribusiness, engaged principally in farming, food production, processing, and distribution of a wide range of produce. Her advocacy initiatives for the agricultural sector have earned several awards and consultancy roles in Africa. She was recently selected as the World Economic Forum by the World Economic Forum as a young global leader. Please join us with a warm platform welcome as we bring up Musumola Umoru. Thank you, please sit down. Okay. Pastor Kodju is not here. I wanted to say thank you to him for the privilege to be here today. Um, I'm very excited and I'm a bit emotional right now. And I'm sure you would all agree with me that the testimonies from the lives of these children in Makoko pretty much sums up all that we're here to do at the platform today. And that for me is one of the best things that could have happened today. It's not about me sharing my story any longer. It's about listening to lives that are being transformed because it's very easy for us as Nigerians to dwell on the issues and dwell on the problems. We all go through these issues. I will tell you my story. My father is in this room today to honor me. But above all, I don't know where he's seated, but he's here. I know he's here. And this is very emotional for me because as I listen to those children, I remember my story. My father had huge dreams. He had huge aspirations. He'd invested so much, but he lost it all. Like most of our hardworking fathers do. You know, I remember that to pay for my JSCE examination, my father had to sell the only house we had. Daddy, I don't know where you are, but if you, I know you can hear me, I just want to say in front of the whole world that I'm grateful. easy for us to all forget you know I'm grateful because he could have done something else with his resource he didn't have to sell that house but I swore to God that I will build him a house today I stand before you to share a journey a journey that would resonate with most of you. A journey that is not unique to me, it's not peculiar to me. Because there's a bit of all of you in my story. Fresh graduates straight out of college, I decided to go on a path that wasn't popular wasn't celebrated like these kids, like Deborah. She's not bothered about her age. She's decided to go back to school, taking her own destiny in her hands. And, and Deborah and her peers changed my story this afternoon. Because it's easy to celebrate the girl who manages a large agro enterprise. It's very easy. But they're hitting back to that glamour. There's an average of 200 million Nigerians. And if each one of us, because people ask me every day, are you crazy? Why did you embark on an agricultural sojourn? I will share why. 
And I hope that I can distort your sleep a bit because I, I think that we're sleeping too much in Nigeria and in Africa. We spend too much time. I think we have too much time on our hands that we're not utilizing properly and I want us to begin to do a paradigm shift. I don't go to bed early. My auntie is in this room. Many nights she will chase me off and say, go and sleep. I came back to the country last night and I remember her as she was going upstairs, I hope you will sleep because you look fairly well rested but you should be prepared for tomorrow. But I haven't slept a wink since last night. And I'll tell you why I can't sleep. If 200 million Nigerians spend an average of 100 naira per meal, per meal, 200 million of us, and I'm saying basic food. 100 naira is not sufficient to feed anybody today, true or false. But if each one of us spend on the average 100 naira, it means that our food expenditure daily is 20 billion naira. Rice and beans only. Gary and granite only. Right? It means that at the end of each month, the average, cumulatively, we all spend about 600 billion, right? On food. I've not said ice cream. I've not said the niceties. I've not said those of us who have brought a palette for luxurious fruits that are imported daily, like grapes, you know, like the English pear, like someone offered me earlier today, or the macadamia nuts or the pistachio nuts that we don't grow in Nigeria. You know how Nigerians have grown a palette for things they don't produce, but it's a lifestyle of, oh, now we now have a rising middle class. So what did you have for lunch? I had pizza, processed flour. Look, for the girls, we will pack it here after a while. Mm -hmm. Call them what, love handles, right? Okay, but, but on a more serious note, if I can borrow little, the, new tri the newer tribes, because these ones here are the newer tribe, and they represent the Nigeria of my dream. <laughs> These guys, and I celebrate you for what you've done, and I hope that many more of us can support you with what you're doing, because that is, all, that is all we need. And, and this event is about being beyond politics. So let's, let's move away from the things that readily, you know, divide us and separate us. The issues around religion that we spend our time talking about. When we should be working around education. My first, I mean, you've all seen the videos. My first land acquisition took me two years. I leased land for my first farm operation, and the guy that I bought leased the land from was a damn fraud. I have begged, borrowed to run my enterprise. Straight out of college, Greenhorn, I didn't know so much. We didn't have a lot of these conferences back then, so I jumped in. By my 27th birthday, I was heavily indebted. I was exposed. 27 million naira, which was like a million bucks for every year I'd lived. I remember my father saying to me when they came to look for me from the financial institution, ah, she the But the truth was, irrespective of the numbers that I saw, my father was my father, so I honored him, right? I didn't, show to, I didn't disrespect him. And that's something that we're fast losing, our values. Our values. The things that shape our humanity as Nigerians and as Africans, we all want to be very Western. Coming back to my story, when I was going to buy the first land, after being swindled a couple of times and after losing money. My girlfriend and I agreed that we, I would start again and we both decided to raise 100,000 Naira each so that I would restart the business. 
because I'd lost it all. I was in debt. The first person that came to my rescue was Dr. Christopher Kolade. I remember walking into his office at the Lagos Business School to say I needed to talk to him. I just, it was a chance meeting. And I asked him, sir, I, have done, I think I have done everything by the books, but I have failed. And he said to me, listening to you, I have no advice. Give me three days, let me seek the Lord's face. And three days later, I went to see him. And you know what he said to me? He said, God said to me, Kolade, Musumola loves me. Yes, she has failed, but she loves me. And Kolade, she needs help. Kolade, you can help her. I was looking for 100,000 Naira. But guess what? I was sitting in his office having this chat with him when I got a phone call from one of the people that was owing money. And you know when you're owing money and the call comes <laughs> and you're in front of a big man like Dr. Kolade, you'll be very careful, you know. Um, so I was very careful. He said, take the call, dear. Take the call, young lady. <laughs> I looked, I said, Baba, you call you. I want to go to the me. Meaning the people I'm owing are the ones calling. So when I took the call, he said to me, I, I need you to do three things. God said to me that apart from the fact that you love him, you haven't been sleeping. So I need to buy your sleep today. I chuckled. You want me to sleep? Okay. 200 million Nigerians. Me, I'm in debt, then I should sleep. So I said, sir, I agree. I would gladly sleep if you want me to. 